everyone welcome back to my channel so in today's video I am going to be doing something for beginners I've been getting messages from you guys telling me to please do something for beginners do like a makeup 101 and I was like hmm it's actually true I've not done anything for beginners in a while here on this channel I was like what's better way to do one now than to do a makeup do's and don'ts so I'm going to try as much as possible to use the same products I might not use the same products in every step I might switch things up but I will try as much as possible to use the same products to show you guys how to apply makeup on one side of your face the wrong way and how to apply it on one side of your face the right way so if you want to see me do this please keep watching so I am going to start out with my brows. Ideally to fill your eyebrows in, you should use a soft to medium brown pencil to do that. Anything that is so dark that it is beginning to look like black, please avoid it. I don't even have any black um, eyebrow pencil here because I would have loved to use black to show you guys this but this is just to show you guys how much of a no-no it is. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use Spikes. Spikes is like a nice medium brown pencil by MAC. To fill in my brow so this right hand side and the darkest brow pencil that I have right now is ebony by Anastasia Beverly Hills and I'm going to use it to fill my brows in and not just fill it in I am going to fill it in the way that I see some people do it on Instagram very dark very pronounced so as you guys can see I like to fill my brows in with very short short soft Strokes. I don't draw any harsh lines at once. So I just do it gently, go in between the brows, find any place where there are blank spaces, and I use the pencil to fill that area in softly. You guys can see the way I am drawing it. This is legit the way you should not do your brows. Don't draw straight lines at once. You end up with a finish that is not natural. It just looks like I filled my brows in with a crayon or a permanent marker. So to define the good brow, I am taking my Maxio Finish Concealer in NW40, which is one shade lighter than my skin tone, which is what you should do. One shade lighter than your skin tone or the same shade as your actual skin tone. Anything two to three shades lighter is an mba. No, no. And that's it. I'm only going to define the bottom of my brows. However, what you should not do is this. Okay, so this here is ABH Concealer in 4.5. And this is like two to three shades lighter than my skin tone. I'm going to go in with the same brush. Guys, let's be reasonable here. There's no reason why in 2017 you are still defining the top of your brows with a concealer that is this, this light. Some people actually define the top of their brows with concealers and they get away with it, but they always do it with something that is the same color as their skin tone. Some people don't even use concealer, they use foundation. I don't even use anything at all on the top of my brows. Just to show you guys how over this a lot of us are. So please, this is a no-no. I see people still do this all the time. I even forgot. There's even this one they do. They bring it, the concealer, all the way. Yes, they bring it all the way into this place. It does not start here. I was trying to be polite. Oh yeah, let us blend. In order to ensure that your eyeshadow lasts all day, you need to prime. I'll be using my MAC Prep and Prime Eyeshadow Primer for this. This is going to help control oil and help the overall wear of the colors that I am going to apply on my eyes. I'm not even going to bother with this eye because I see people with eyeshadows that are creasing. 
slash cracking all the time and the only reason why your eyeshadow is creasing is because you have not done anything to control the oil that your eyelids are producing priming is really important it is not just an unnecessary step that youtubers drop in there for you to be confused no you have to prime if you don't prime your eyes and you have oily skin like me you're on your own for my eyeshadow look for this video i am going to be using juvia's face nubian 2 palette this is one of those palettes that you can use to create several looks without reaching outside of this palette i am going to start with the good eye first one thing that you guys see me do all the time and this step is really necessary is use a transition color a transition color is a color that helps you blend the edges of two other colors out it is important and my favorite color for transition in this palette is Morocco it's a very burnt orange shade so this is the reason why I love it for this I'm going to go on ahead and apply this slightly above my crease so what I like to do next is to apply my lid color I'll be using Sheba and for someone like me that doesn't have very big eyelids, I have decent sized eyelids. I don't think that they are too small or anything. However, most of the times I like to create the illusion that they are actually bigger than they are. And to ensure this, what I like to do is that I like to take the eyeshadow slightly into my crease. Just past my actual lid space so that, you know, my eyes look a little bit more open than they actually are. So next, to add some depth to my eyes, I'll go in with this brown here and a tapered crease brush and I'm going to apply this first at my outer corner and then I'm going to take it into my crease a little bit, just blending as I go. And to set my brow bone area, I'm going to use this shade here with a small eyeshadow brush and I'm just going to pat this into this area and blend it out after I have set my brow bone what I would normally do is to go back in with that transition shade and use it to blend out where my crease color meets the brow bone highlight color okay it just gives this whole seamless look and get rid of get rid get rid of and gets rid of any hash lines I'm going to line my eyes and I'll be using a pen liner by Deck of Scarlet. What I like to do is that I first start out by creating a thin line here. Just a thin line and then I just pull the line back inwards. I'm going to show you guys what I just explained. So with this side, you're trying to create this type of look. What you don't want to do is to skip this color here and then move straight to this brown. And to apply your lid color, you use the same eyeshadow that I used on my lid. However, you just focus on the lid space that you can see when you're looking up. You don't bother to look down like I did while I was doing this to create a nice lid area for yourself and then at the end of the day you have a very wonky uneven line in this area you don't want that this color has some shimmer in it and applied lightly you guys see the way that it looks on my brow bone in this area you don't want to pack it onto your brush and then <laughs> And then when it comes to eyeliner, using the same eyeliner, you create a comma in this area because I see people who do this and then they go and do something like this. If you're going to line your waterline, please take your time. Just pull your eyes gently and then gradually just work the eye pencil into this area very gently keep going back and forth till you till you achieve the intensity that you want what you don't want to do is to take the arabian nights route because i see this all the time people just start from here and they don't care where the pencil goes so it's actually supposed to be in here but then they do this i know that sometimes some people just want to go for like a dark pencil on their lower lash line but it's not really appropriate for every look you know i'm going to apply mascara on my top lashes first i want to believe that 
mascara cannot make this side of my face worse so even if it drops on the lid at this point you're going for a certain look you can as well maintain it by smudging mascara on your eyelids you know for my lashes i'm going to be using a pair of lashes by beauty king this one is called mama to mama So this is the normal way that I would normally apply my lashes. I have a detailed video on this. I'm going to link it somewhere on top here so that you guys will watch it and see what I have done here in detail. But this is ideally how you should apply your lashes. Go from the top, drop the lashes down and then try to adjust it and make sure that it merges with your natural lashes. What you don't want to do when it comes to applying false lashes is to go in from this angle here, okay? So you go in from this angle and you begin to fight with your natural lashes in the process. So let me show you guys one thing that pisses me the hell off, especially on Instagram. Because you see makeup artists do very good makeup sometimes and you're looking at the lashes that their clients have on. You see the way these lashes look right now? I call it the I swear to God style because I see the lashes are literally calling unto God. They are facing heavenward. They are not supposed to. Okay, guys, priming is really, really important, especially if you have oily skin. You need to prime your face. So I'm just going to go on ahead and prime my entire face. No, I'm going to prime one side because there is still the possibility that some people don't prime their faces. On the right side of my face, I'm going to be using Max Zero Fix Fluid in NW45. This is my actual shade. So I am going to buff this into the skin. On this side of my face, I'm going to be using another MAC foundation, the same Seal Fix Fluid, but this time around in NW43. And the reason why I'm using this is because here in Nigeria, I see people who like to use foundations that are lighter than their skin tone most of the time knowingly sometimes when you go to the makeup counters the the sales attendants actually tell you sometimes that these people want their foundations lighter that they want it lighter babe yes if you go and get a foundation that is already lighter than your skin tone you will still go and highlight and contour what are you trying to do that's some real old juju calabar stuff and people do it all the time you're not supposed to do that You see, this right here is the reason why you have to find your voice at the makeup counters. If somebody matches you with something like this, take an excuse, permission, go outside, look at yourself in the natural sunlight, and then come back and go for another shade. Because this is too light. By the time you highlight with this, you're going to look like an Ojuju Calabar. You guys know by now that I like my highlights very natural, very subtle. So I'll be using Amand, which is just one shade lighter than my actual skin tone. On this side of my face, however, I am using the same concealer. However, this is like two to three shades lighter than my skin tone. This is caramel, okay? set my immediate under eye area with Ben Nice Banana Powder. This is just to prevent creasing with the concealer that I just applied. And I don't bake for too long, you guys know. However, what you don't want to do when your face already looks this light is bake. And when I say bake, I mean baking for God knows how long, okay? So I'm just going to start by applying as much powder as I can. The thing to note is that the longer you bake, the lighter your highlight is going to end up being. Just know. On this side of my face, I'm going to be using Black Opal Stick Foundation in Caro. It gives me a very natural contour. On this side of my face, I'm going to be using Black Walnuts, okay? Guys, I know that I use it sometimes, but I always use it lightly and I blend it out well, especially when I want a more defined contour however you have no business applying this much it does not make sense and you want to know what is worse than applying contour that is this dark it is not blending it out well 
That is what is worse. So I'm going to set the contour on this side of my face and I'm going to use Espresso or I am using Espresso by ABH. Just a little bit of it and I am working it into this area. Just lightly. This brush here is my small contour brush. It's really fluffy and it just distributes the color evenly. To set the contour here, I'm going to be using the same contour powder. However, I'm going to be using one of these, um, I don't know what they are called, kind of brushes. They are very, very flat and dense. and I'm just going to use it to create a straight line and the bad thing about this is that it just sets however it doesn't blend out as it sets so it gives you one very serious hash line if you're going to use this I would highly recommend that you use this in circular motions however this brush just isn't the perfect type of brush when you're going for a subtle contour okay so yeah I'm using my black upsetting powder to set my entire face I'm using Max Blush in Raisin to add a nice flush of color to my cheeks and to define it. And I'm also making sure to blend it out as I go, okay? What you don't want to do is use a blush that is too light. This one is NYX's blush in red. And you can actually apply this lightly and get away with it. What you don't want to do is apply it like this. I'm defining my lower lash line a little bit and I'm using Kenya. The brown that I used to define my crease earlier, just to add, you know, just to define my eyes a little bit. I'm not using too much. I'm not even going to bother with here because the eyeliner is blocking space. There's no space for me to smudge anything. I love highlighter. Everyone loves highlighter. However, a little should go a long way. I'm going to be using Max Mineralized Skin Finishing Gold Depots, which you guys know that I love this. And I'm just going to apply this just very gently on my cheekbones. I'm not doing too much. Just so that it looks nice, but not too much, okay? What you don't want to do is use a highlighter like this. This is ABH Peach Nectar Illuminator. It's actually a nice highlighter. I use this very gently on a normal day. What you don't want to do is to pack this much on your brush, like swirl it like this into your brush without tapping anything off and then going here like this can you guys see this 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 is how you want your highlighter to look not like this i see people who do this all the time it is too much too much please <laughs> guys please i can't stop laughing i just look so stupid right now see i'm going to finish this up um with um lip color application and i felt that the best lip color to use for this part would be a nude lipstick so i'm going to show you guys how not to wear a nude lip color okay so i'm going to start out with how to wear it i'm going to line my lips with a medium brown lip pencil So for my lipstick, I'll be using a nude lipstick by MAC. This one is called Yash. And if the nude color that you're trying to apply is a little bit patchy, one thing that I'd highly recommend, although this one was not patchy, is to use a clear lip gloss or any type of lip gloss to blend it out. So I'm going to apply a lip gloss, irrespective of the fact that this was not patchy. And this one is by Celara. What you don't want to do is to go in with this color straight out of the tube without lining your lips and apply it like that. You should not do that. It does not end well. <laughs> Guys, please, these are the necessary steps to take to avoid looking like an Igbo masquerade. Don't do any of the things that I have done on this side of my face. Please don't. I hope that this video was helpful, especially for those of you who requested it. Don't forget to thumbs it up if you liked it and subscribe if you're new here. I love you guys and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.